All right. So now what we're going to have is we have the closer look at figure three down here. Oop, where'd it go? Figure three down here. It's going to reveal some interesting facts about our T sub n, our trapezoidal rule, and our S sub 2n, which is our Simpson's rule. Now, first, if f is a linear function, then the two trapezoids in figure three are basically going to coincide because it's going to be a linear function. And so it's just going to be laying right on top here, and it's going to re be laying right on top there. And so it's not going to have to worry. So the blue line would be straight, just the same as the red line. Okay. Uh, second, if f is a quadratic function, then a calculation shows that s sub 2n is equal to the exact value of the definite integral. Third, if f is any function, or just data for that matter, then s sub 2n is equal to the sum of the area of n regions, each bounded by a parabola. Now, figure 4 over here on the bottom shows that these three regions, which we have, you know, it's going to be 1, 2, 3. Those are the three kind of regions. And there are going to be six subintervals. The first is a region from uh, basically x sub 0 to x sub 2. And that gives us kind of the parabolic shape here. And then we have uh, the top boundary here is the parabola through the points x0 and f of x0. And then x1, f of x1. And that's going to be at the point right here. And then we have our last point, uh, the x2, f of x2. Okay, And then the second one is going to be from x2 to x4. And similarly, we have x2, the x3, x4. And then here we have a concave up. And we have the 4, the 5, and the 6. And that's kind of what we're showing here uh, uh, with all these rest of these. It's kind of showing where the boundaries are and how the shapes are. So we have concave down, concave down, and then a concave up parabola. Okay, Now, uh, so that kind of just ties up the trapezoidal rule and the Simpsons rule to kind of show you what it looks like on a, a kind of more complex uh, value. What we want to do now is we want to move into using a table of integrals to actually, you know, solve some of our problems. And so we're going to have weird kind of integrals. We're going to have things like something like a plus bu or the square root of u squared minus a squared, or there's a lot of different ones we'll see here in a little bit. Now, the variable u is a variable of integration, so usually that's going to be our x value. And so we're going to resubstitute whatever our x is. We're going to call it u. So when we're looking in the table, it says u, but we're going to think of x. And then we have A's and B's. Those are just going to be constant numbers. So we just those we just write down whatever the constant is. And then it's going to be plug and chug, basically. Once you figure out which integral in the table one to use, then you just write it down and you should pay, be OK. All right. So um, basically, you should be able to match the integrand exactly by assigning values to the constants in a formula to whatever's in the table. And that's going to be kind of a nice thing. All right, so we want to use table one to find one over five plus three, the quantity x, rather, the quantity squared plus our times one plus x dx. All right, so what we need to do is we need to go to our table. And so we'll go over here and we're going to look and we're trying to, again, find something, one over something squared times something. And so if we keep going down, none of those look like that. But this one does. So we have a plus bu squared times c plus du, then du. Again, our x's are u's. And this was a 5 plus 3x, the quantity squared, times 1 plus x. And then it was dx. OK, so we're using this function. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to plug in the values in my function over here for what that is equal to. Okay, so what do we have? Well, uh, where's my, there it is. So A in this case is five, B is equal to three, C equals one, and D is equal to one. So using that table, I can say, well, directly I get one over five times one minus three times one times, then I have one over five plus three X Plus, now I have 1 over, and then I have, parenthesis, 5 times 1 minus 3 times 1, then the quantity squared. And then I have ln, absolute value, of 1 plus x over 5 plus 3x. Okay. And then, because this is not a, a definite integral, this is an indefinite integral, I'm going to have a plus c. 
Now let's simplify this. So that's going to be 1 over 5 minus 3. So that's going to be 1 over 2. And then we have times. And that's going to be 1 over 5 plus 3x. And then plus. And here I'm going to have 5 minus 3 is 2 squared. So that's going to be 1 over 4. And then I'll have ln of 1 plus x over 5 plus 3x plus c. And so that is my integration of my original uh, function of the integral of 1 over the quantity 5 plus 3x squared times 1 plus x, then dx. So again, just using the table, we were able to get to that. And that's the way a lot of the problems in this section are going to be. You just have to figure out which number in the table fits the problem we're going to work with. So let's stop there and we'll come back for some more.